All right, so a cultivating mindset can help you overcome trials in this walk. Spiritual lenses that dictate what information you process and use to make sense and navigate situations you encounter. Mark 7, verse 21. This is going to help brothers and sisters who always end up in the same situation or happen to make the same mistakes over and over and over and over and over and over again. Those who don't learn from things going around them. Why? Because you have a weak mindset, and your mindset is either going to diminish you or allow you to cultivate. The choice is yours. All right, let's go with Mark 7, 21. Let's go with the diminishing mindset. The book of Mark, chapter 7 and verse 21. Mm -hmm. For from within, out of the heart of men, mm -hmm. proceed evil thoughts. So from within, out of the hearts of men, and what is the heart of men, brothers? Mind. Your mind. Go ahead. Adulteries. Adultery comes from the mind. Go ahead. Fornication. Mm -hmm. Murders. Thefts. Fornications. Murders. Go ahead. Thefts. Mm -hmm. Covetousness. Covetousness. Wanting something that is not yours. Having an evil eye towards something. Go ahead. Wickedness. Wickedness. Deceit. Deceit. Lasciviousness. Lasciviousness. An evil eye. An evil eye. Go ahead. Blasphemy. Mm -hmm. Pride. Go ahead. Foolishness. Go ahead. All these things, all these evil things come from within mm -hmm. and defile the man. And it defiles you because it does not allow you to, to cultivate. You won't have the cultivating mindset. You won't be able to grow in this truth if these things are found inside of you. Now, all of these things that we read, guess what? That's in each and every one of us. Those attributes are in each and every one of us, especially in today's society, the way our views and opinions, I forgot who said that, is shaped by your immediate reality, that being TV, okay, social media, things that we see with the eyes, because we tend to see with the eyes, and what comes after that? Once you see with the eyes, what do you start to do? Huh? It starts with an L. Lust. You lust with the eyes. Okay, it could be anything, all right? Everybody's lust is different. I know a lot of times when we say the word lust, we tend to think about just woman, 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 woman. It can be anything. It could be a brick of cocaine, okay? It could be a car. It could be anything, all right? That lust, that, there's, there's lust on different levels. It's not always talking about just sex and woman all the time, okay? But I'm bringing that up to show you that our mindset a lot of times can be shaped on what we see. Okay, y'all understand that? Yes, sir. Get me Galatians chapter 5. We're going to expound on Mark 7, verse 21 with Galatians chapter 5, and I would like to start at verse 19. The book of Galatians chapter 5. And now, verse as we're going over this class, brothers and sisters, you need to be honest with yourself and ask, ask yourself. Look at your pattern in this truth from the very first day that you walked into the doors until now. What has your pattern been like? Is it a diminishing mindset or is it one that's going to allow cultivation? Think about it. Examine exact. Examine everything that you've done since day one until now. All right? Go ahead. Galatians chapter 5, and I want verse 19. The book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. The works of the flesh were the same thing that we read about in Mark 7 verse 21. Go ahead. Which are these? Mm -hmm. Adultery, mm -hmm. fornication, uncleanness, mm -hmm. lasciviousness, idolatry, mm -hmm. witchcraft, Hatred, variance, emulations, mm -hmm. wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, Go ahead. envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, mm -hmm. as I have also told you in time past, Go ahead. that they which do such things mm -hmm. shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So these things that we're reading about were made manifest and whatever uh, individuals that we're reading about who was dealing with these things. Remember, it starts in the mind, like we read in Mark 7, verse 21. But now, Paul, in his letters to the Israelites in um, Galatia, he says, he said, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So now you let your thoughts become actions. Why? Because you had a weak mindset which did not allow you to apply nor cultivate. 
When you apply the laws of God, guess what? Whatever trials, tribulation, or sin you are able to overcome, you're supposed to learn from that. There's supposed to be a how and why behind every action that allows you to cultivate. You can look back and see and help the next brother or sister next to you that might be battling that same thing. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. So that's how it, it's a, it, it can't be a selfish walk. We have to be examples to each other, right? I mean, am I, am I making this up? No, sir. Right? Officer Yaqub is not just living for Officer Yaqub. He's living for Officer Hezekiah. He's living for, brother, what's your name again? Officer Jeremel from Arkansas, all right? He's living for Officer Zephaniah. We all, all of our actions is based upon each other. We're supposed to be a selfless people. That's what allows the, the brothers and sisters next to you allow you to grow because we're constantly being watched. We're looking at each other's examples. Y'all understand that? Because a lot sure. of times brothers would be quick to say yes, but their actions, uh, actions are totally different. You don't see any kind of cultivation. You don't see growth. It's the same mistakes in the congregation year in and year out. Sisters is the same thing. Why are you always involved in gossip? Why are you always involved in murmuring? Why? Because you don't have a cultivating mindset. You have a, a mindset that, I can't even say stationary, it's a diminishing mindset, because nothing is really stationary, right? Because time is passing, and whatever thing, guess what? It starts to dissolve, okay? As time passes, guess what? This is gonna rust if you don't take care of it, right? So there's really nothing stationary, your mind is gonna, your mind, your mind is gonna rust if you don't constantly feed it with the word of God, if you don't constantly apply and allow yourself to cultivate. That's what I see going on. Okay, you see that in this body and you see it across other congregations in Israel United in Christ, where brothers are not applying, sisters are not applying, and is you you your mindset is just is just void. There's no cultivation. Because you were the same, the way you were in day one is the same, you, the same way you are now. Going on your third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh year in Israel United in Christ. You have not changed. You have not cultivated at all. That kind of mindset is the one that tends to leave. Then they go on Facebook making a four or five part series about Israel United in Christ. Because you have not grown since you've been in here. Okay, so Paul says, they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Give me Proverbs 23, verse 7. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23 and verse 7. So here we have Deacon Yawasop's favorite scripture. Go ahead. For as he thinketh in his heart, mm -hmm. so is he. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Equals what? What is that equal to? Officer. As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Translate to what? It's telling you that uh, your, your thoughts become your actions. The way that you think is the way that you will manifest yourself. What's another word for that? Um, it's the topic that we're going over. Mindset. Mindset. Yes, sir. Mindset. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. If you're full of all of those attributes that we just read in Galatians 5, Mark 7, verse 21, guess what? It's going to manifest in your actions. You're going to be that brother or sister that Paul said, they that do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Read that again. Read that again. Proverbs 23, please. Verse 7. Come on. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. So if you're always meditating on adultery, wrath, envy, hate, guess what? As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. You're not going to have no cultivating mindset. You're going to be out these doors. Why? Because you're going to be that brother and sister that's always in some drama. Emulation, covetousness, if that's all that's on your mind, guess what? You will not last in this truth. You will not last in this truth. And guess what? Five years is nothing. Because you hear people talk about five years, they're 10 years. That's nothing. Guess what? I've been in Israel United in Christ for 10 years. That is nothing. I'm still a novice. I'm still a novice sucking on the breast, desiring the sincere milk of the word. And I can say that. So how much more you guys? Okay, you got to have that mindset to grow, brothers. 
You can't think that you already, you already made it. Y'all understand? Yes, sir. But it shows through your actions. It shows through your actions. Read that one more time. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. As for, as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Go ahead. Eat and drink, saith he to thee, mm -hmm. but his heart is not with thee. So eat and drink, just like we're in the Feast of Dedication now. Eat and drink. Everybody be merry, but your mind ain't here. We could tell by your actions. We could tell of things that you did in the past, just yesterday or just a week ago, how you responded to certain brothers in certain situation. Yeah, we know the lamb is good. We know that nice curry goat that the brothers got there. Well, was it jerk chicken or curry goat? Yeah, but look at that. <laughs> Benjamin heaven. They got curry goat and jerk chicken. But your mind ain't here. Your mind ain't right. So what are you, physically present, spiritually absent? You don't got the cultivating mindset. You come here for the meal. The food is good. But your action says otherwise. Your mindset has not grown since you walked into these doors. Read that one more time. Read the whole thing in its entirety. Yes, sir. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23 and verse 7. Mm -hmm. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Mm -hmm. Eat and drink, saith he to thee. Mm -hmm. But... His heart is not with thee. But his mind is not with you. His mind is on the food. You want to satisfy your taste buds. It's a hangout spot. Sunday school, like the bishop always says. Time will tell for everybody. Get me um, Galatians now. Now let's, let's segue into the, um, into the proper mindset that each and every one of us should have. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. The book of Galatians chapter 5 and verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. And, and you know what? I got to say something about Proverbs 23 verse 7 when it says, Eat and drink, saith he, but his mind is not with thee. I remember when we were going through our trial with the, uh, the Judas Iscariots, the abundance of Judas Iscariots that left Israel united in Christ. There was a group of brothers who went on the, the quest to wake up the 12 tribes. And then the same week they came back, they all bounced. They all bounced. And every single last one of them was putting up posts on Facebook. But these were the same brothers that was on the cruise with us to wake up the 12 tribes, eating and drinking in the cafeteria, breaking bread amongst each other. But in their mind, they had it, look, man, I'm out. Once this boat docks, I'm out, and I'm going to go to Facebook to do all my evil. So what was the point of coming? What was the point of coming? There's no fear of God. There's no fear of God in Israel. That's why we do the same thing over and over. Remember, we are that nation of people that walked around the same mountain for 40 years. You think to a Negro after one week, he would have been like, yo, something's wrong, because this mountain looks familiar. You think after maybe two months, no, <laughs> The Negro who's walking around the same mountain for 40 years. That is us. This Bible don't fit no other group of people on this planet Earth but us. You see brothers with rank. They'll watch other brothers make mistake. They themselves will get into that same rigged vehicle of a crash test dummy and make the same mistake. Then when you try to speak to them about it, the cojones on them. <laughs> the cojones on brothers. Like, bro, come on, man. You know what you're doing. This is wrong. You've seen brothers make all of these mistakes. You go and make the same mistake. A lot of times we let pride take over us. But I'm telling you, pride is, is, is not going to allow your mindset to grow in its truth. If your mindset is stunted, you will not last. You will not last. You're going to be in the devil's playground. You are going to be in the devil's playground. You need a strong mindset, brothers, in order to endure in this truth. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. All right. Okay. I heard a lot of yes, sirs before, too. All right. Um, get me Galatians 5, verse 22. The book of Galatians, chapter 5 and verse 22. So this is the proper mindset that we should have right here. Go ahead. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. Mm -hmm. So love is what? 
Officer Tahan. Give me a scripture. Read that. The book of 1 John, chapter 5 and verse 2. By this, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and keep his commandments. Very good. Very good. Very good. So love is keeping of God's commandments. Come on. The book of Galatians, chapter 5 and verse 22. Mm -hmm. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, mm -hmm. joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So, um, Soldier Kazak, why does it say against such there is no law? Because this is the the things that we should be exercising towards our people, showing love, being in peace, and being patient with them, so on and so forth, like it named. So why does it say against such there is no law? Because it's right. Ezekiel, you don't sound sure. Ezekiel, why does it say against such there is no law? Because all this stuff is found in the law, so there is no law against having a... Uh, being temperate, having love, joy, peace, long-suffering, there is no Very law good. against that. Very good. That is the correct answer. Okay, um, read. Read verse 24. Verse 24. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. Go ahead. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. So if you, lived, if you live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Meaning actions. Go ahead. Let us not be desirous of vainglory. You see that all throughout YouTube. Go ahead. Provoking one another. Mm -hmm. Envying one another. And envying one another. Okay, now get me Wisdom of Solomon 6 verse 9. Like I said, we're going over what your mindset should be. Okay, fruits of the spirit, not works of the flesh. So everybody's mindset right now should be on this one thing. One, Wisdom of Solomon, 6 verse 9. Go ahead. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and verse 9. Go ahead. Unto you, therefore, O kings, do I speak. Mm -hmm. o, the, unto you, O what? O kings. Mm -hmm. O kings. Are you brothers kings? Yes, sir. Really? Do you really believe that? Who believes that? Let me see your hand. Y'all really believe y'all kings? Yes, sir. Okay. Hmm. Officer Yakub, you believe you were king? Yes, sir. Why? Because what that's makes what makes you a king. First is what God called me. It's what He ordained me to be. Also, in my actions, I try to take actions that are kingly, uh, meaning according to the commandments of God. Officer Hezekiah, you believe him, or or is he full of sh? Okay, Officer Zephaniah, what? How about you? Are you a king? Uh, yes, sir. Why? Uh, like the officer said, that's what the most hard thing well, has I, to be. I don't want to hear what the officer said. I want to well, like, hear what's on your mind. Like the scriptures say, mm -hmm. uh, God put the blessings on our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We stand in that lineage. We're supposed to be the kings, priests, gods of this earth. So That's yes, it? Yes, sir. I believe we, we are kings. I'm that, a king. That's it? Because of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? That, that, that How about those in the wilderness that were swallowed up? Weren't they of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Yes, sir, but they didn't want to do those things that or, uh, God ordained those kings to do. So those, you would say that actions. doing those things would allow you to have a strong mindset and allow you to be able to cultivate? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Officer Milkerman, do you believe Officer Zeph or is he full of SH? You believe him? Why do you believe him? Well, we're supposed if we're ordained to be prophets and lead the people, kings lead people. So we're supposed to lead the people in keeping the commandments and, and keeping so law So you would order. say that um, through your years here in um, Israel Uniting Christ in Dallas, that your observation of Officer Zephaniah is one of him being a king, a righteous example? I would say so, yes, sir. Okay. All right. Officer Lavi, do you agree with them? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, all right. So Officer Yakub and Officer Zephaniah, you guys are doing a a good job, a, a decent job. I don't want to give y'all too much credit. All right, all praises to the Most High for that. Good. Wisdom of Solomon 6, verse 9 again. Come on. The Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. 
Unto you, therefore, O kings. Do Unto I... you, therefore, O kings. Get me Revelation 1, 5 to 6. And guess what? You brothers are kings. You brothers are kings. Absolutely. Okay? Get me Revelation chapter 1, verse 5 to 6. Come on. The book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. And from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness mm -hmm. and the first begotten of the dead mm -hmm. and the prince of the kings of the earth. And the prince of the kings of the earth. With an S, plural. That's talking about you, brothers, the Israelites. Okay, go ahead. Unto him that loved us mm -hmm. and washed us from our sins in his blood mm -hmm. and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his father. And has made us kings and priests unto God his father. Is there more on that? To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. To him be glory and dominion unto him forever and ever. Amen. So where's your crown? Where is the crown? I don't see any crowns. So what's going on here? Because the Bible's saying that you are kings of the earth. So what's going on here? Officer Yerachamel. Get me Galatians. Chapter 4 and verse 2. Let me hear one and then we're going to go to verse 2. Go ahead. Uh, scripture say that we have to endure to the end. Endure until the end, okay. So what, what's the kind of mindset you got to have to endure until the end? You got to have a mindset to keep these commandments to death. That's it? All right, we'll, we'll, we'll touch on that as we go on. Give me Galatians. The book of Galatians. Because like I said, it's easy. That's a, easy, that's a generic answer. Keeping the faith in the Most High in Christ. Keeping the commandments. In the, Revelation 14, verse 12 is everybody's favorite scripture. But when you look on social media, you don't see that. I'm talking about our social media. When you see brothers and sisters doing the same thing, getting put out the congregation for the same thing, everybody following the same pattern, you don't see that. When you see the murmuring and bitter and strife going on in these congregations, you don't see that. Revelation 14, verse 12 is very easy to quote, but your actions say different. So what does that say about your mindset? Give me Galatians. Go ahead. The book of Galatians, chapter 4 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, differeth nothing from a servant, mm -hmm. though he be lord of all. So guess what? We are all children in here. Like I said, I put myself out there first. I'm, I'm a novice in here. I am still a child in this truth. Okay? And it says the... the the child, as long as he's what? Just read it again. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Now I say that the heir, as long as he is a child, mm -hmm. differeth nothing from a servant, though he be lord of all. So we got to be, well, guess what? We got to be servants one unto another. Okay? Though we be lord of all. Okay? Although you have brothers in certain ranks, office of 10, over 10 men, office of 20, over 20 men, we still got to be servants one to another. Y'all understand? There was a class that Deacon, um, not Deacon, I'm sorry. There was a class that, I might be prophesying something. There was a class that Captain Yahshua um, did call rule like a king, not a tyrant. Okay, that's having charity for one another when you rule like a king, not a damn tyrant. All right? In IUIC Dallas, there was a tyrant here before, okay, that had a position of authority. You see how that ended for him. Okay? Read. Verse, verse two, mm -hmm. but is under tutors and governors until the time appointed of the father. So right now, before Christ comes, we are under what? Tutors and governors. That's why you brothers have people over you to guide you. It's not to rule over you in tyranny, but it's to guide you. So when we give suggestions, it's to guide you. It's not to rule over you. It's not to be your daddy. It's not to tell you to go stand in the corner and go jump. So when we give you suggestions, brothers, whether it be for anything pertaining to Israel United in crisis to guide you. We don't want to see you brothers fall. We don't want to see you brothers end up in piss poor marriages, the marriage from hell. We don't want to see you sisters end up with a loony tune. We don't want to see you brothers end up with a loony tune. We don't want to see anything happen to you when you go outside these doors, when you go into Esau's world and you have to carry yourself a certain way. Y'all understand? Yes, That's the cultivating mindset, the, mind, the mindset of growth. I pray you brothers understand. Um, read that again, please. Come on. Verse 2. Mm -hmm. But is under tutors and governors mm -hmm. until the time appointed of the Father. So that's the heir to the throne. 
which is each and every one of you brothers, supposed to be under tutors and governors until the time appointed of by the Father. Okay? Go back. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 6, verse 9. The book of Wisdom of Solomon. Mm -hmm. Chapter 6 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. Unto you, therefore, O kings, do I speak, mm -hmm. that ye may learn wisdom. That and ye may learn wisdom. Come on. And not fall away. How do you fall away? That diminishing mindset. Those attributes that we read in the book of Galatians. Okay, chapter 5, verse 19, which are the works of the flesh. That's what's going to cause you to fall away. Not being in the spirit, that's going to cause you to fall away. But being in the spirit is going to prevent you from falling away. Y'all understand? Yes, sir. Read that part again, Officer Yakub. Unto you, therefore, O kings, do I speak, mm -hmm. that ye may learn wisdom mm -hmm. and not fall away. And not fall away. Get me James 2, verse 26. Like I said, actions speak louder than words, right? Yes, sir. Go ahead. The book of James, chapter 2 and verse 26. Mm -hmm. For as the body without the spirit is dead, mm -hmm. so faith without works is dead also. So like I said, a lot of times brothers will say, yes, sir, yes, sir. The brothers will, yes, sir, to the hell to well, say yes, sir, until you freaking, your eardrums bleed. But don't want to do nothing out of the Bible. Don't want to take any kind of counsel. Don't want to be under tutors and governors until the time appointed. Brothers will yes, sir, you to death. Read verse 26 again. The book of James, chapter 2 and verse 26. Mm -hmm. For as the body without the spirit is dead, mm -hmm. so faith without works is dead also. So all your yes, sirs, all your quoting of Revelation 14, verse 12 means nothing if there's no works. So it shows the kind of mindset that you're in when there's no works to follow up behind it. You just come here, you show up, and then you leave. There's no works behind it. Go back. Wisdom of Solomon, 6 verse 9 again. The book of Wisdom of Solomon. Mm -hmm. Chapter 6 and verse 9. Mm -hmm. Unto you, therefore, O kings, do I speak, that ye may learn wisdom and not fall away. Go ahead. For they that keep holiness... Holily shall be judged holy. And so the, those who keep the Lord shall be judged holy. Come on. And they that have learned such things shall find what to answer. And they that, I have, that have learned wisdoms, because wisdom is the such things, shall find what to answer. Go ahead. Wherefore, set your affection upon my words. God's words is his what? I can't hear y'all. Laws. Good. Wherefore, set your affection your affection is love. Set your love upon his words. Go ahead. Desire them, mm -hmm. and ye shall be instructed. Now it says desire. Desire them, and ye shall be instructed. Behind every desire, there's what? Actions, right? Like, let's, let's speak from a carnal standpoint. When you're in the world, many of you had aspirations to become a basketball player, maybe boxing or whatever. Guess what? Your desire for that particular uh, um, sport Allowed you to go into the gym, train for it, diligently too. Not just once a week, but you was constantly in the gym. Why? Because you had desire to become an athlete, right? It's the same thing for us. We desire to become what? Kings. So what should you be doing? Your mind should be on God's laws constantly. Get me Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23. Don't let these words slip from you. As you're reading the scriptures, put your mind you got to really examine yourself, brothers. Ask yourself, what kind of mindset do I have now? Was your mindset great when you first walked into, the, into these doors? And has it changed through the process of time? Did you get comfortable? Did trials and tribulations, afflictions or whatever, congregational issues, marital issues, personal issues, did that allow your mindset to diminish or did it allow your mindset to cultivate? You have to be honest to you. You could fake the funk with us sometimes, not all the times, because sometimes brothers put on a damn good show. But you got to ask yourself, what kind of mindset do you have? Give me Proverbs chapter 1, verse 23. The book of Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 23. Mm -hmm. Turn you at my reproof. Turn you at my reproof. Come on. Behold, mm -hmm. 
I will pour out my spirit unto you, uh -huh. and I will make known my words unto you, mm -hmm. because I have called and ye refused. Stop right there. Go to 2 Timothy 3.16. This is to explain wisdom of Solomon 6 and verse 11, where God says, desire them. The them is the wisdom. Desire them, and ye shall be instructed. But in order to be well instructed, brothers, you must desire it first. You can't jump to the second process without going through the first step. Come on. The book of 2 Timothy, chapter 3 and verse 16. Mm -hmm. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Come on. And is profitable for doctrine, mm -hmm. for reproof. For correction. Come on. For correction. And for correction. Go back to wisdom of Solomon. So nobody should be having a screw face when corrected. You shouldn't be in that spirit because it, it, being in that spirit lets you know what kind of mindset you have. That's a mindset of pride. That's a mindset of I know it all. I already made the kingdom. And this ain't the kingdom. If you think this is the kingdom, something wrong with your mindset. Something wrong with you. Go back. The Wisdom book of, Proverbs. of Solomon 6 and verse 11. Come on. The book of Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 6 and verse 11. 11. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, set your affection upon my words, Read. desire them, and ye shall be instructed. Read on. Wisdom is glorious and never fadeth away. So the Most High's laws is glorious and never fadeth away. Go ahead. Yea, she is easily seen of them that love her mm -hmm. and found of such as seek her. Mm. Go ahead. She preventeth them that desire her. And making herself first known unto them. She preventeth them that desire her. Prevent, prevents you from what? Fading away. Falling away. Go ahead. Whoso seeketh her early shall have no great travail. Whoso seeketh her early shall have no great travail. Read on. For he shall find her sitting at his doors. For he shall find her sitting at his doors. Let's explain that. Let's go into that. James 1 and 5. The Bible says right here, wisdom of Solomon, one of the wisest, the wisest king to ever live this planet Earth. He said in verse 14, whoso seeketh her early shall have no great travail, but he shall find her sitting at his doors. James 1 and verse 5. The book of James, chapter 1 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. If any of you lack wisdom. If any of you lack wisdom, brothers, come on. Let him ask of God. Let him ask of God, come on. That give it to all men liberally. Come on. And upbraid it not. Mm -hmm. And it shall be given him. And it shall be given. But what you got to do? You got to ask first, correct? Yes, and sir. you can't ask amiss, right? That goes back to the same desire that we read earlier, okay? You got to desire this thing. So you ask God for wisdom, okay, which is his law, statutes, and commandments, and you start to apply that will show how much you believe in what you're asking for when you receive it. Give me Wisdom of Solomon 7. You're going to read 12 to 14. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. And I rejoiced in them all, mm -hmm. because wisdom goeth before them. Mm -hmm. And I knew not that she was the mother of them. What is the, when it says wisdom goeth before them, what is the them? What is the them? What is the dem? Everybody got their head down. Officer, stand up. In the scripture before that, it mentions riches and all other knowledge. Yes. Now, remember, those are the things that were added unto King Solomon. Why? Because he desired wisdom first. He desired wisdom first. And what did God tell him? God said, for this, I'm going to give you wisdom, but I'm also going to give you all the riches as well. Because you asked for wisdom first. And he didn't ask for it amiss. He asked for it not to be a lord over everybody and rule like a freaking tyrant. No. He asked because he wanted to be a righteous king. He wanted to judge the people with righteous judgment. Y'all understand? Yes, sir. Read. Wisdom of Solomon 7, 12 to 14. Come on. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 7 and verse 12. Mm -hmm. And I rejoiced in them all mm -hmm. because wisdom goeth before them. Mm -hmm. And I knew not that she was the mother of them. Come on. I learned diligently. I learned diligently. I learned diligently, right? That goes into meditating on the laws constantly. 
day in and day out. So what kind of mindset did King Solomon have? We're reading about the mindset right here, right? His mindset was, was established on foundations given to him by his father and mother, and he kept up at it. He even went to the Most High and asked for wisdom. And Most High said, look, I'm going to bless you with all of this because you asked for wisdom. Go ahead. I learned diligently mm -hmm. and do communicate her liberally. And do what? Communicate her liberally. He said he, communica he communicated her liberally. So he shared that wisdom with his peers. He shared the knowledge of God with his peers. How many of us could say we do that? Is your conversation blameless when you talk to each other, when you call each other, when you hang out, when you go to the movies, or is it worldly conversations? Are you constantly meditating on the laws of God? Or are you talking about what they were showing on World Star Hip Hop? It said he communicated her liberally. Go ahead. I do not hide her riches. It said I do not hide her riches. Come on, meaning the fruits that come from that wisdom. Read on. For she is a treasure unto men that never fell it. Mm, that, mind, that mindset that keeps on growing. It says wisdom is a treasure unto men that never faileth. That man that will never fade away. That man that will never turn his back on God. That man that will never turn his back on his brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Which they that use become the friends of God. You hear what God is saying? God is calling you a friend. When you keep his laws, statutes and commandments, when you establish wisdom and you share it amongst each other, you apply it and your application, you can see the results of it with a cultivating mindset. God says you have become a friend, not just David, not just King David, but you brothers. When you apply God's commandment and you grow within God's commandments. Go ahead. Being commended for the gifts that come from learning. Being commended from the gifts that come from learning. You, you hear brothers talking like, damn, that, how, brother, that was good. That was deep. That was the correct breakdown. Or oh, this brother, you applied, you applied this commandment in this situation? How did you do that? What did you see from that? How did that allow you to grow? Brother, I'm battling that. Damn, can I sit next to you? Can you tell me what to do so I could overcome this? Not a bad example. Not being a bad example to the brother next to you. Brother, why did you do this, man? Shit, man, I'm a grown-ass man. You don't got to tell me shit. You don't got to tell me nothing, nigga. Because that's what he's saying. That's what brothers say when you give them advice and they don't listen. They're like, yeah, this is a nigga. You a nigga. What the hell I got to listen to you for? Because you got a beard, purple and gold. I don't got to listen to you for nothing, nigga. That's how we dealt with each other outside these doors. Some of us, we were trying to bring in the same doodle into the congregation, into the world of Christ. Your mindset ain't going to grow. That's a diminishing mindset. Read that again. For she is treasure unto men that never faileth, mm -hmm. which they, they that use become the friends of God. Mm, go ahead. Being commended for the gifts that come from learning. Being commended from the gifts that come from learning. What, what verse are you at? Verse 14. All right, is that it on it? Yes, okay. sir. Okay, go back to Wisdom of Solomon 6, verse 15. The Book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and verse 15. To think, therefore, upon her is perfection of wisdom. To think, therefore, upon her is the perfection of wisdom. Come on. And whoso watcheth for her shall be quickly without care, shall quickly be without care explain that what does it mean shall be shall quickly be without care what was Karim help him out um read it one more time so I can break it down as you read it to think therefore upon her is perfection of wisdom so the scripture is telling you that when you meditate on the commandments uh it'll help you perfect uh actually performing those commandments that you meditate on mm -hmm. read on and whoso watcheth for her uh -huh. shall quickly be without care. And it's mm -hmm. telling you when you really start to keep the commandments, you don't worry about different stresses of the world no more. Very That's good. That's exactly what it's talking about. Excellent. Very good. Psalms 55 and 22. Very good. Very good. That's that cultivating mindset I'm talking about. Right? Understanding what the scriptures are saying. 
The book of Psalms. Mm -hmm. Chapter 55 and verse 22. Mm -hmm. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. That's why the Mosai told King David what? Cast thy burden upon the Lord. Who was King David in relation to King Solomon? His father. His father. So don't you think he told King Solomon that? Where do you think King Solomon got uh, that, uh, that verse, where we, that idea from that verse that we just read? He heard it from his daddy. He heard it from his dad. Go ahead. Cast thy burdens upon the Lord. Come on. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, mm -hmm. and he shall sustain thee. Mm -hmm. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. That's those who apply wisdom. Those who apply the commandments. Is there more in that verse? No, sir. Get me Matthew. Matthew chapter 6. We're going to bounce around because it's a long. Get me Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. The book of Matthew, chapter 6 and verse 24. Mm -hmm. No man can serve two masters. So no man can serve two masters. Come on. For either he will hate the one and love the other, mm -hmm. or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Come on. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and riches. God and riches. We got brothers in certain positions. Guess what? That's between you and the Lord. You got you to gotta figure out what kind of mindset you do have. Is your job preventing you from keeping the commandments? Is your God, is your job, is your God, is your job, which might be your God, is it preventing you from growing in this truth? These are the things we got to look, we got to figure out. What kind of mindset are you in? Are you going to serve God or mammon, riches? Lay up your treasures upon heaven go ahead read verse um jump from 24 go to 26 the book of matthew chapter 6 and verse 26 now we're still talking about the cares the without care part go ahead behold the fowls of the air for they sow not neither do they reap mm -hmm. nor gather into barns mm -hmm. yet your heavenly father feedeth them so you got the the birds in the sky ravens or whatever birds they have out here right I've seen a few uh, wild birds since I moved to, to Dallas. Guess what? They don't go without food. So how much more are you? But a man of wisdom, a man of God is going to understand these things. Right? He understands that, look, if I serve God and I put God first, the Most High is going to sustain me. So that is not going to become a stumbling block to you to where your mindset is not, where, where your mindset is not allowing you to cultivate because you're worried about the cares of riches. You're worried about all these different variables that sometimes might afflict you in this truth. Because all of us would like a great paying job. Okay? But guess what? Trials are going to come with that. Your boss might say, look, I need you to work on Friday. Friday night or Saturday. Then what you going to tell them? Oh, I can't. Um, why? Because uh, you're not going to say I'm an Israelite, right? You're going to say, well, uh, I keep the commandments of God. I go to the Catholic Church. I believe in God, too. And then what you going to do? That's just one example. Y'all understand where I'm headed? Yes, sir. Mindset. Read verse 26. Verse 26. Come on. Behold the fowls of the air, mm -hmm. for they sow not, neither do they reap, mm -hmm. nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Feeds the animals. How much more are you? Right? Here we have the Creator. Of all creations, he's taking care of the sheep, the owl, the rat, the pig even. And you think he's going to forget about you? To those who say they love him, you think, you think God is going to forget about you? Absolutely not. Go ahead. Are ye not much better than they? Aren't you better than those mammals? Go ahead. Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit uh, unto jump, his... Jump to verse 31. Verse 31. Mm -hmm. Therefore, take no thought, saying, mm -hmm. what shall we eat, mm -hmm. or what shall we drink, Come on. or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Jump to verse 34. Verse 34. Mm -hmm. Take therefore no thought for, to, for Actually, the morrow. No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Jump. Uh, just keep reading from 31 down. I'm sorry. Yes, Go ahead. Verse 32. Mm -hmm. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. Mm -hmm. For your heavenly Father knoweth. That ye have need of all these things. And these are the things that we, we tend to question and lust after. Why? Because we see things on social media. 
We see what the Gentiles, I'm talking about the real Gentiles are doing. Even those of us in a Gentile state of mind, we see it, right? right. All the fashions and things like that, all right? These are the things that we worry about. But God is saying, for after all these things, do the Gentiles seek, come on. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. How do you seek ye first the kingdom of God, brothers? You desire wisdom first. You desire wisdom first, which is the application of God's laws. Y'all understand? Yes, sir. Go ahead. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, mm -hmm. and all these things shall be added unto you. Read. Take therefore no thought for mm -hmm. the morrow, mm -hmm. for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Mm -hmm. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Those who only think about today and don't give a damn about tomorrow. That's what it's talking about in that verse. All right, give me wisdom of Solomon. Back again, wisdom of Solomon. Verse 15 or 16? Uh, verse 16, please. The book of wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and verse 16. For she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her, mm -hmm. showeth herself favorably unto them in the ways, mm -hmm. and meeteth them in every thought. Get me um, Deuteronomy 6 verse 4. For she goeth about seeking such as are worthy of her, showeth herself favorably unto them in the ways, and meeteth them in every thought. So God's, con God's convo, which is the law, statutes, and commandments, should be in every thought. Why? Because every thought that we have as men, as sinful men in this sinful body, is a fleshly thought. is a thought of adultery, fornication, lasciviousness, hatred, murmuring, gossiping. Go ahead. Come on. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6 and verse 4. Come on. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Come on. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart mm -hmm. and with all thy soul mm -hmm. and with all thy might. Mm -hmm. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. So the, the words, meaning the Lord, shall be in our mind. Go ahead. Is there more? Uh, verse 7. Go, let me hear it. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. You should teach them diligently unto your children. Go ahead. And shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house. When you're sitting down, guess what? That should be a thought. Go ahead. And when thou walkest by the way. When you're walking by the way, talk about the Most High's laws. Come on. And when thou liest down. Mm -hmm. And when thou ri risest up. And when thou risest up. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon. We had verse 17 now. Wisdom of Solomon 6, verse 17. Come on. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6 and verse 17. Mm -hmm. For the very true beginning of her is the desire of discipline. Mm. Come on. And the care of discipline is love. So the true beginning of wisdom is the desire, the desire, the desire of discipline. Now, what kind of mindset is that? A mindset of discipline. That's the kind of mindset that we should all seek for. It says the true beginning of her is the desire of discipline. Read. And the what? And the care of discipline is love. And the care of that wisdom that was imparted onto you is the keeping of God's commandments. Get me Wisdom of Solomon 1 and verse 5. Because I know that discipline is hard for many of us. And as I'm teaching you, brothers and sisters, guess what? I'm talking to myself, too. So I won't be a hypocrite. Guess what? I'm checking myself too. Better believe that. Wisdom of Solomon, 1 verse 5. Come on. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 1 and verse 5. Mm -hmm. For the Holy Spirit of discipline mm -hmm. will flee deceit. So the Holy Spirit of discipline will flee deceit. Come on. And remove from thoughts that are without understanding. Mm -hmm. And will not abide when unrighteousness, com when unrighteousness cometh in. So it's all about discipline. That Holy Spirit of discipline is wisdom, meditating on God's laws and applying God's laws, which will allow you to cultivate in this truth. It all falls down to discipline. That's one of the main foundations in this truth, disciplining your spirit, not letting that the flesh manifest itself, being always in the spirit, walking in the spirit. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon 6. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 6. In verse 18, read, and love is the keeping of her laws, mm -hmm. and the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. Mm. 
Now it says, love is the keeping of her laws, and the giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. Somebody explain that. Why is, why is the love, why is love, which is the keeping of her laws, how does that give us the insurance of incorruption? No, somebody else that has not been raising their hand. Give me somebody else. Officer Shema. We know that love is the keeping of her laws. Now, King Solomon says, it, giving heed unto her laws is the assurance of incorruption. What is that? It's going to keep us, the law is going to keep us from deteriorating. Okay, so, give so, me some more. There's more. So if we apply the laws as far as um, thou shalt not hate, thou shalt love thy brother as I love thyself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We'll treat our brothers like we, we want to be treated. Or we won't sleep with his wife. Mm -hmm. We won't steal from him. Okay. So if we're applying laws like that. Now, concentrate on the part where it says her laws is the assurance of incorruption. You gave me the spiritual um, standpoint. Give mm -hmm. me some more. It says the laws... Far as the laws would assure us not to, um, keeping the laws would assure us not to do those things. Um, what else? There's some you more. You want me to dig in a little more? Yeah. Let me, let me see. Give me somebody. Give me uh, Officer Jeremel from Arkansas. So in keeping up, in keeping the laws, we're gonna, you'll realize that hey, I get the kingdom. That's gonna be the end. The end result is incorruption. How are, how are you gonna get the? Okay, you said the end result is incorruption. Explain that a little more. So we're in corrupt, in corruption. Like right now, we got that corruptible body, body, right? Very good. Very so, good. So very uh, good. In the end, we'll get that incorruptible. Very body. good. First Corinthians fifteen, verse fifty. Start at verse fifty. The book of First Corinthians, mm -hmm. chapter fifteen, and verse fifty. So we know the end result. We believe. We all have faith that we are the Israelites. Correct. Yes, sir. So if you believe that you are indeed the Israelites, you're going to keep God's laws. And you believe that when Christ makes his return, right, the dead shall rise first. That's the end goal. Everybody wants the kingdom. So you're going to strive for that thing. To hell and back, you're going to fight for that thing. Your mindset should be one of grit. Write that down. Grit. Write that down. Your mindset should be one of grit, G-R-I-T, capitalize that thing, because that's something that Negroes lack. Read. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 15 and verse 50. To 53, come on. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Come on. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Mm -hmm. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep. But we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, mm -hmm. and we shall be changed. And we shall be changed. Was that verse 53? Verse 53. Go ahead. For this corruptible mm -hmm. must put on incorruptible. Because we have a corruptible body, right? right? Which can decay, right? Which is a product of sin. We are in a what? Corruptible state, a mortal state. Go ahead. And this mortal must put on immortality. The only way you're going to put on immortality is if you desire wisdom. And your mindset is on what? Achieving the kingdom of God and doing those things that are worthy of achieve, achieving the kingdom of heaven. Is that it? Yes, sir. Get me, go back to Wisdom of Solomon now. The book of Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 6 and verse 18. 19. 19. And in corruption maketh us near unto God. Go ahead. Therefore, the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. Now it says the desire of wisdom bringeth to a kingdom. That goes back to when you were called kings and priests. How does the desire of a kingdom bringeth to a kingdom? Give me Luke, chapter 17, verse 21. The book of Luke, chapter 17 and verse 21. Neither shall they say, lo here or lo there, mm -hmm. for behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Mm -hmm. And he said unto the disciples, the days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, mm -hmm. and ye shall not see it. Mm -hmm. And they shall say to you, see here or see there. Stop right there. The Bible says the kingdom of heaven is, when, is within you. So the kingdom of heaven starts here. Remember in the book of Daniel, what did it say? Let me see who's thinking. In the book of Daniel.
That's to come. I want more than that. Something before. I'll give oh. you a clue in the chapter. Chapter 2. Yeah, Daniel 2, 44. Uh, in the, the Lord's going to build his kingdom. In the days yeah. of these kings shall he establish a kingdom. That's happening now. The keeping of God's commandments amongst the Israelites, the once dead Israelites who are now awoken, that's happening now. What do you think when it says the kingdom of heaven is within you? You brothers are going to establish the kingdom. You're going to establish the kingdom. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. So what does that say about your mindset and how it has to be? It has to be one built on something. We're going to read it. Read the next verse. Go back to Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom 6, of verse 21. The book of Wisdom of Solomon. Mm -hmm. Chapter 6 and verse 21. Mm -hmm. If your delight be then in thrones and scepters. If your delight be on thrones and scepters, brothers, rulership. Go oh, ahead. Ye, oh, ye kings of the people. Oh, now he turns around and says it again. The same thing he said in verse 9. Oh, ye kings of the people. Go ahead. Honor wisdom. Honor what? Honor wisdom. That's what Solomon understood. Honor wisdom. Everything else is vanity. That's what the book of Ecclesiastes was about, about his repentance. He said everything is vanity. At the end, what? Fear God and keep his commandments. That is the whole conclusion of mankind. It says to honor wisdom. Honor wisdom. Come on. If your delight be then in thrones and scepters, mm -hmm. O ye kings of the people. Come on. Honor wisdom uh -huh. that ye may reign forevermore. How do you reign forevermore? You put on incorruptible. Right? That's how you reign evermore. You get the kingdom. Read. As for wisdom, mm -hmm. what she is and how she came up, I will tell you uh -huh. and will not hide mysteries from you. Go ahead. But will seek her out from the beginning of her nativity uh -huh. and bring the knowledge of her into light mm -hmm. and will not pass over the truth. Now, just like I said earlier in the class with King Solomon, he desired wisdom first. When you read 1 Kings chapter 3, 8 to 13. All right. He desired wisdom first, and the Most High blessed him with the abundance of riches. Okay? Now, we're saying this. Can your mindset be changed? Can one's mindset be changed? Can your mindset be changed in this truth? Of course. That's it? Just of course? Yes. I mean, yes, your mindset can be changed in this truth. Um, one, it could be changed from bad to good. As you come in, you might be like the like we all came in ignorant, stupid, mm -hmm. sottish. Then over a course of time, we learn wisdom, mm -hmm. seek seek knowledge, study, apply, so on and so forth. Okay, very good, very good. Yes, your mindset can be changed, brothers. Okay, there was occurrence where my mindset was changed, or your mindset was changed. But the key is, how did you overcome that mindset? When that mindset became feeble, when you started to have a little doubt and fear, which is the devil's playground, pretty sure you heard Deacon Aitan say that a few times, right? Satan, doubt and fear is Satan's playground. All of our mindset sometimes was a little rocky. So what did you do to fix that mindset? That's what the Bible is about. That's what makes the true character of a man. What did you do to overcome? How did you overcome? And will you keep overcoming once those trials come your way, Okay. I put down, yes, having internal situation awareness. When situations occur, you have, to, you have two options that are determined by your mindset, fight or flight. And we've seen a whole bunch of cases of people, what? Choosing flight, right? right. Leaving the truth. Give me Wisdom of Solomon 9, verse 15. The book of Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 9 and verse 15. For the corruptible body. For the corruptible body. Come on. Presseth down the soul. Presseth down the soul, meaning the mind, the mind, the spirit, the spirit wants to do right. But the body, which is full of flesh, which is prone to sin, he wants you to do wrong. He wants to walk after his lust. He wants to corrupt your mindset. Read. And the earthy tabernacle. And the earthy tabernacle, which is your flesh. Come on. Weigheth down the mind. That museth upon many things. And your mind will museth upon many things. But it was, it would, your mind will be weighed down by your own thoughts. Sometimes your own thoughts will afflict you. I don't think them brothers like me, man. They always chastising me, always trying to correct me. Or the sisters, man, that's, that sister thinks she better than people. I don't like the way she look. She bumped into me. She might hate me. Or she corrected me, Leviticus 5 and 1. Who the hell she thinks she is? 
I make more money than her. She ain't. Sh These are the things that occur in the mind. Then when you talk to the brother, sister, brother, did this, did that. Nah, bro, why would I do that? Why would I say that? Why would I think that? But you already afflicted yourself in your own counsel. That's what happens. We got to be very careful of that. Okay? Get me, um, read that last part in Wisdom of Solomon 9.15. The earthy tabernacle weigheth down the mind that museth upon many things. Mm -hmm. And hardly do we guess aright at things that are upon the earth. Okay, and so in order to overcome, brothers, and have a strong mindset, you must show grit. G-R-I-T. Now, the acronyms are guts, resilience, integrity, and tenacity. Write that down. Guts, resilience. Guts is big cojones, and I'm talking about spiritual balls, all right, not physical ones. <laughs> guts, resilience, integrity, and tenacity. Okay, which also translates to courage, perseverance, internal situational awareness, and determination and purpose. Okay, let's go over the G, which is the guts, which translates to courage. Give me Acts 15 and 26. Acts 15 and 26. Because a lot of times we think we have it harder than our forefathers. Brothers, absolutely not. Ain't nobody getting beheaded. Ain't nobody getting stoned. Ain't nobody getting hung right now for teaching the Bible. As it was during the time of Christ and the apostles and afterward. Okay? Give me Acts 15, verse 26. The book of Acts, chapter 15 and verse 26. Mm -hmm. Men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the apostles, they hazarded their lives. Every aspect of their lives was put in danger by them calling themselves followers of Christ, keeping the commandments and teaching the commandments. Every aspect of their lives was hazarded. Let me ask you a question. Officer Zeff, let me ask you a question. Do you know what an ulcer feels like? A ulcer. Anybody ever had an ulcer in here? You know no, what an sir. ulcer feels like? No, sir. Would you ever drink acid? No, sir. Okay. If I told you you had to go to a foreign country to teach the gospel, but the result of it is you would have an ulcer, would you do it? Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. You would do it? Yes, sir. You like that feeling? The burning sensation in the chest? No, no sir, but okay. I, I so, understand what the scriptures say. You understand what the scriptures say? Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Give it to the brother next to you. Officer Yurakama, how about you? Yes, sir. Okay, you would do it in a heartbeat? Yes, sir. Okay, all right. So I guess we like ulcers in here, huh? Y'all like ulcers? No. Mm, okay. But the reason I'm bringing that up, these are things that happen, all right? Those are, that's part of uh, hazardous. A lot of times when you travel the country, you might have to take something, and then as a result of you taking whatever medication or preventatives that's out there, now you're stuck with something for the rest of your life. But the mindset of having guts and not giving a damn, right, that spiritual fortitude, guess what? It doesn't matter because you know that you're putting your life on the line to increase this word because you are not selfish. You're selfless. Y'all understand that? Yes, sir. Read that again. Acts 15, verse 26. Come the on. book of Acts, chapter 15 and verse 26. Mm -hmm. Men that have hazarded their lives mm -hmm. for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. They hazarded their lives. Um, what do I want? Uh, get me Acts 5. Get me Acts 5. Just jump down to verse 40. Just to bring you up to speed, Gamaliel was having a counselor with these men. He said, leave these people alone. If they're about God, you can't stop them. But if they are not and they're full of SH, it's going to come to naught. But look what happened. Come on. The book of Acts, chapter 5 and verse 40. And to him they agreed. Mm -hmm. And when they So they agreed with Gamaliel, but look what they did right after they said, yes, Gamaliel, we understand what you said. Look what happened. Go ahead. And when they had called the apostles and beaten them. They still beat the hell out of these men. Y'all ain't get touched yet. How many of y'all got touched at camp? You ain't get touched yet. Ooh, somebody screamed in your face. Somebody sucked their teeth. Somebody threatened you. Man, that's nothing. 
The disciples was getting punched in the face, whipped, rocks thrown at them, some put to death like Stephen and so forth. Read. They commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Go ahead. And they departed from the presence of the council. Come on. Rejoice. Rejoicing, not, not flight. They didn't run. They rejoiced. Come on. Rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. That's a prime example of guts and courage. Showing that grit factor. Shows you where the mindset of the disciples were. They were on what? Scepters and thrones. And not only for themselves, but for their brothers. They were communicating wisdom liberally. It showed you their mindset. Okay? Go back to Matthew 14. I mean, go to uh, Matthew 14 now. 29 to 31. Read a little faster. Yes, sir. The book of Matthew, chapter 14 and verse 29. To 31. Go ahead. And he said, come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship... He walked on the water to go to Jesus. Mm -hmm. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he the was wind, afraid. The wind could be a representation. I know it's talking about literal wind, but guess what? What is the wind now? Trials and tribulations. Go ahead. But when he saw the wind boisterous, mm -hmm. he was afraid. He was and, afraid when that wind came. Go ahead. And beginning to sink, mm -hmm. he cried, saying, Lord, mm -hmm. save me. Uh -huh. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand. Because he had doubt. He had doubt. Here's the son of man. You've seen him doing many miracles. You stepped into the water. You was walking on water just like the son of man. But that wind came and then bloop, went right under the water. The same way trials and tribulations come now. And what do y'all men, many of y'all do? Y'all go under the water and don't even try to swim up. Brothers just end up drowning. Sisters end up drowning in their trials and affliction. Go ahead. And immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith. O thou of little faith. Come on. Wherefore didst thou doubt? Wherefore didst thou doubt? Okay, now let's go to, let's get resilience. Let's go over resilience and perseverance. I'm just giving examples. There's many examples that you brothers and sisters might be able to pull. I'm just showing a few. All right, get me Paul, please. Paul showed a lot of resilience. Give me Philippians chapter 3. I want verse 12 to 16. The book of Philippians chapter 3 and verse 12 to 16. Come on. Not as though I had already attained. Mm -hmm. Either were already perfect, mm -hmm. but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Mm, he said, though, hold on, read that again. Read it again nice and slow. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Not as though I had already attained. Not as though as though I already obtained. I didn't make it yet. I didn't get the kingdom yet. Go ahead. Either were already perfect. Come on. But I follow after. Mm -hmm. If that I may apprehend, for that which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Go ahead. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but yep. this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind. So we got to forget those things which are behind because those things in the past can what? Can press it down on the spirit, right? On this earthly tabernacle. Go ahead. And reaching forth unto those things which are before. Reaching forth unto those things which are before, meaning the kingdom. Remember, the kingdom of heaven is what? Within you. So in order to reach forth, when you reach for something, you reach with your hands. So what is Paul talking about? Actions. Actions. Go ahead. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high call. towards the mark. This is a man of resilience right here because Paul caught hell. Paul went through what none of us have ever gone through in his truth. Go ahead. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling Come on. of God in Christ Jesus. Mm, is that verse 16? No, sir. Read. Let us therefore, as many as be perfect, be thus minded. Mm, be thus minded, meaning all of us should have one mind. Come on. And if anything, and if anything ye be otherwise minded, mm -hmm. God shall reveal even this unto you. Remember, stop at verse 16. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Mm -hmm. Let us mind the same thing. Let us mind the same thing and all walk by the same rule. Is that it? Yes, sir. Give me 2 Corinthians 11, 23 to 28. The book of 2 Corinthians, 
Chapter 11 and verse 23. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. Mm -hmm. I am more. And so Paul was great. Paul, Paul was great, but he never let pride get on him. Go ahead. And labors more abundant. He had lab he labored more abundantly. Go ahead. And stripes above measure. He caught many stripes above measure. Go ahead. And prisons more frequent. Mm -hmm. And deaths oft. Come on. Of the Jews, five times received I 40 stripes, save one. Mm, that's a lot of stripes. Imagine what his back looked like. Imagine what Paul's back looked like. Go ahead. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Mm -hmm. Once was I stoned. Come on. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. Mm -hmm. A night and a day have I been in the deep. Mm. Go ahead. In journeyings often. Come on. In perils of water. In perils of robbers. In perils by my own countrymen. Mm -hmm. In perils by the heathen. In by the heathen. In perils in the city, come on. In perils in the wilderness, mm -hmm. in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. Read on. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, come on. In hungers and thirst, uh -huh. in fastings often, mm -hmm. in cold and nakedness. Go ahead. Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily. And the daily thing that he had to deal with. Read. The care of all the church. So out of all of this, he still daily had to care for all the churches, not one of the churches, all the churches. And we read about all of the churches in the New Testament, okay, with all his letters. He still had that mindset, look, even though all these things happen to me, I still got to press towards the mark, and I still got to care for the churches. Although these Negroes won't listen to me, they won't listen to anything I got to say, some of them hated Paul Guts, he still cared for the churches. Paul showed grit. He was resilient. He understood the mission, which all of you should understand the mission. Okay, um, drop that. Get me Romans 8.35. The book of Romans, chapter 8 and verse 35. Mm -hmm. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Mm -hmm. Shall tribulation, tribulation. or distress? Uh-huh. Or persecution, mm -hmm. or famine, mm -hmm. or nakedness, Come or on. peril, or sword, as it is written. For thy sake we are killed all the day long. Mm -hmm. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Mm -hmm. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Mm. That's that conquering spirit. There's that mindset, brothers. There's that conquering spirit. Why? Because Paul showed Resilience and perseverance through all of those things that we just read that did not stop Paul in his mission. Not one bit ever do you read about Paul backsliding. And I'm talking about after the conversion. He did not backslide not one bit, nor was he stationary spiritually not one bit while he was resilient. Now let's go to in um, integrity, okay, which can also be internal situational awareness. So we're going over grit. We went over guts. Resilience. Now we're going over integrity. Like I said, there's many different um, examples. All right. I just chose a few. All right. Give me um, Job. Job chapter two. What does integrity mean? Officer Hezekiah. Give me the short version. Integrity. Integrity, uh, doing the right thing even when no one's looking. OK, good. Good. Come on. The book of Job, chapter 2 and verse 9. To 10. Go ahead. Then said his wife unto him. Then said his rib, his one flesh unto him. Come on. Dost thou still retain thine in integrity? Do you still retain your integrity? Curse. Man, you lost all of these things. The most High took everything. And you still have integrity? Go ahead. Curse God and die. Why don't you curse God and just drop dead? Curse him out. He took everything from you. Your house, kids, riches. But Job, what did he say? Read. But he said unto her, thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaking. Right? He wasn't like Ahab, right, in the Baal. He didn't, he didn't go crying to his mommy or crying to his wife in this instant, resting his head upon her bosom. Like, you know what, babe? You're right. I will. I will curse God. No, he didn't do that. He said, what? What he told her? Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaking. And you can only imagine what Job told his rib. 
I'm pretty sure he didn't say, thou speakest like thou <laughs> foolish. No, he probably was cursing her to hell and back. All right, go ahead. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? Because the scriptures talk about that. All things coming from God. Life, death, right? Increase, decrease. Job understood that. And Job showed great integrity. That's why at the end, when you read in the last chapter, the Most High restored all things back to him fourfold, fivefold. Okay, that's integrity. Um, staying on your foundational wit and sticking through with it. That's integrity. Okay? Now, let's go to um, uh, tenacity, determination and purpose. Tenacity equals determination and purpose. Give me Daniel chapter 1 and verse 8. <clears throat> the book of Daniel, chapter 1 and verse 8. Mm -hmm. But on. Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat. So that could have resulted in Daniel's head on a platter under um, Nebuchadnezzar. But he was like, nah, we don't eat that. I can't eat that defiled food. So he purposed in his heart that he shall not what? Would not eat the portion of the king's meat, uh -huh. nor with the wine which he drank. Come on. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the eunuchs that he might not defile himself. So he, that determination in him, that, that character, that trait of tenacity allowed him to reach out to the king and say, look, man, I can't eat that. But let me eat this, please. And guess what? The most I moved the spirit of the king to allow him to do that. Okay, that's an example of tenacity. Give me um, Genesis, Jacob, <clears throat> Genesis 32, 24. Lord's will, we'll be able to make a short film on this right here. This is going to be a bad scene. The book of Genesis, mm -hmm. chapter 32 and verse 24. Come on. And Jacob was left alone, mm -hmm. and there wrestled a man with him unto the breaking of the day. You can't even get a brother to do ten jumping jacks. Jacob was wrestling the angel until the break of the day. And it wasn't five minutes, ten minutes, no. It was a very long time. Imagine what his heart rate was like. But he was determined. He was purposed in his heart like, I'm going to receive this blessing. Yes, you are going to bless me. Even though you're you, you kicking my butt right now, and I can't even get a lick in, I can't even touch you with a finger, I'm going to continue going. That's an example of tenacity. Okay? That is an example of tenacity. Get me Sirach chapter 2. So pressure creates true grit. That's the mindset that we sh all should have. Pressure creates true grit, and the Most High is going to put each and every one through that fire. Sirach chapter 2 and verse 1. The book of Sirach chapter 2 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. My son, if thou come to serve the Lord, mm -hmm. prepare thy soul for temptation. Come on. Set thy heart aright. Come on. And constantly endure. Come on. And make not haste in time of trouble. Don't make haste. The man and the woman that's going to show grit, you are going to constantly endure. Trust me. And either until you drop dead or Christ comes back. You will be that brother or sister 20 years from now, still a part of Israel united in Christ. Still enduring. Why? Because you showed grit. And you obeyed what God says to constantly endure. Go ahead. Cleave unto him. And mm -hmm. depart not away, uh -huh. that thou mayest be increased at thy last end. Read on. Whatsoever is brought upon thee, take cheerfully. Come on. And be patient when thou art changed to a lower state. Read. For gold is tried in the fire. For gold is tried in the fire. Remove all those impurities that we read about, right? The works of the flesh. Give you the fruit of the spirit, which is going to allow you to endure, which is going to cultivate your mindset which was, is going to allow you to grow. You're not going to be that same brother or sister making the same mistake every year, every month, every week. Y'all understand? Yes, sir. Give me Jeremiah 51 verse 20. Because not only is God going to try us as gold, brothers, there's a purpose behind that. Guess what? God has a purpose as well. You think God just does things just to do it? Give me Jeremiah 15 verse, 51 verse 20. The book of Jeremiah, chapter 51 and verse 20. Read. Thou art my battle axe and you weapons brothers, that are going to be the kings of the earth once you have the proper mindset, which are going to be the priests of the earth once you have the proper mindset. You are his what? Battle axe. Battle axe. What is God going to do with this axe? Come on. And weapons of war. Come on. For with thee will I break in pieces the nation. Mm, with thee I'm going to break in pieces the nation. But your mind got to be right. You got to desire wisdom. Once you desire wisdom, you're able to what? Use that wisdom. Communicate it liberally. 
and physically and spiritually, now God is going to be able to use you because you have that grit factor. You got that mindset that he's looking for. Now he could use you as a battle axe to put the Chinese under your foot, to put the, the Ammonites, the Japanese under your foot, the Arab man. And most importantly, we can't forget forget about him, the Edomite man, the white That's man. Right. Go ahead. <clears throat> and with thee will I destroy kingdoms. Mm. With thee I shall destroy kingdoms. Give me Romans 12, verse 2. Three more scriptures and we're done. God says, with thee I shall destroy kingdom. This is the Israelite state of mind. That is the title of today's class. Israelite state of mind, hashtag grit. The book His of... Go ahead, Romans 12, verse 2. The book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. And be not conformed to this world, mm -hmm. but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Don't be conformed to this world, like many of our brothers and sisters that was just celebrating Thanksgiving. A couple of weeks is going to be Christmas. Why? They got conformed to this world. They let all the variables change their mindset. Well, they never had a mindset to begin with. That's why they got to be renewed. That's why we were once renewed. Go ahead. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. And that will of God is keeping the commandments. Once you start to renew your mindset, which is a process, which is a daily process, it's not something you do once and then that's it. Okay, it's something that you got to constantly do every day, all day. Why? Because you have the principalities and workers of darkness in high places that are trying to change your mind constantly. Okay, once you start to renew your mindset... Give me 1 Samuel 10, verse 6. This is what God is looking for. 1 Samuel 10, verse 6. Come on. The book of 1 Samuel, chapter 10 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon thee. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you once you ask for wisdom liberally and you start to apply. Go ahead. And thou shalt prophesy with them. Come on. And shall be turned into another man. What's that other man? The spiritual man, not the carnal man. The Most High is looking for the spiritual man. That's what the Most High is looking for. He's not looking for the carnal man, the corruptible man. Give me John, chapter 1, verse 47, last scripture. The book of John, chapter 1 and verse 47. Here's the Israelite state of mind. Come on. Jesus saw Nathanael come into him and saith unto him, uh -huh. Behold, an Israelite indeed. So in you, you hear what Christ said? Christ said, behold, an Israelite indeed. This was under the fig tree. Be behold, an Israelite indeed. Come on. In whom is no guile. In whom there is no trickery, no deceit. That's the Israelite state of mind that we have to have. All right. We're going to close it out on that. Brothers, I pray, and sisters, I pray y'all got something from today's class, brothers. Let's, in, let's constantly endure and keep showing that grit factor. Y'all understand? All right. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.